Hello guys, in this tutorial we're going to learn how to use a server to client to server remote function in Roblox. Server to client to server remote function is very similar to our prior tutorial on client to server to client remote function. It's just the, the opposite. Basically what we want to do is we have this part C here. When a player touches this part, we want to display a message in the text label for that player that is touching this part and then the remote function is going to return back the color a random color of the label which we're going to use to change the color of this part a here all right so it's going to be very similar to what we did in the prior lesson the only thing is it's going to be the the opposite of that it's got we're going to start on the server side and we're going to the local client side and then it's going to return back a value to the server side. Let's get started by going to our re replicate storage. We're going to add a remote function and you can search for it or you can select it from the list. This is the remote function I have just added. Now we're going to go to our part C. We're going to add a touch event. So go to your part C and add a script. The first two lines here we're declaring our part C and our remote function inside of replicate storage. Here we have a touch event and we're checking for humanoid that is touching our part. If it is a humanoid, we're going to turn off the can't touch property of the part. So we only want to re register only one single touch to this part. And now our part B is the character that is touching this part. We want to get the player. So to get the player, we're using the player service here. And we're using the, the get player from character function from that player service to get the player. Because we're going to need the player to invoke the remote function. So to invoke the remote function, we're going to start with remote function colon invoke client we're passing in the player as the first parameter that is required anything after that is optional we're passing in here we're passing in a message to tell the player which part name was touched so we're concatenating part name with this touch here we're just gonna wait for the client side to return a value back to us so your script is going to get stuck here until we get a value back. Once we get the return value, which is going to be a color, we're going to load that into this variable color, which we're going to use to change our part A color. And then once we're all done, we're returning the can touch back to true. Now let's go to our started UI and create a local script. In your local script, just put in the following lines. On the last line here, we're binding our remote function to a local function. To bind the remote function to the, a local function, you're going to start with the re remote function, followed by dot on client invoke. Set that equals to the function name. In this case, our function name is change color. This is our local function. One thing to notice here is on the server side, when we're invoking the client, we're passing in two separate parameters, the player and the text. But on the local side, we're only having one parameter coming in because the player is automatic and it is required. On the first line in our function, we're changing the text label to the text that is coming in. We're waiting for seven seconds before we're creating a random color and we assign it to this variable color, which we're gonna to use to change the background color of our text label. The color is returned back to the server side. So the color is gonna go into this color variable here, which we're gonna to use to change the color of part A. And then we're setting everything back to normal. We're setting the can touch back to true. Let's now play and take a look. I'm 
I'm going to go and touch part C. Notice all three parts are blue now and the text label is white. As soon as I touch part C, you can see right away there's a message here being sent to the single player who touches that part. And then you're going to wait for seven seconds. The client side has selected a random color for the text label and it passed back that random color to the server side, which the server side used to change the, the color of part A. Now both part A and the text label has the same color. Now before we go, I just want to point out a couple of things. Generally, this method of using remote function, server to client to server, is discouraged by Roblox. And the reason for that is the uh, client side can be hacked by hackers. So to ask for data back from the local side, the data could be unreliable. And number two is when you use remote function from server to client to server, your script is going to be stuck on this line here until you get a value back. As you can see in our example in this tutorial, we invoke the client and then we went and changed the color, but the color of the brick did not change until after seven seconds because it got stuck on the local side here. So whatever comes after this statement here, it's not going to be executed until the client side is done and return the value back to the server side. So if you never get a value returned back, then your, your whole game is going to be hanged. The, whatever that comes after this line will not be executed. All right, so just keep that in mind when you're using remote function server to client to server. And thank you all for watching. We'll see you again soon. Take care.